Man, this was sad, man. This was very sad, man. TNT Spoon. Because I know there's a level of embarrassment, too, because she only got one year. And they were in the media all year. They were one of the teams because of Angel Reese, because of their rivalry with Caitlin Clark. They had a lot of the highest rated games of the season were between her and Christy sides going at it, coaching. And um, so she was one of the more known, notable WNBA coaches. And they were, they had a thing going. They were in the playoffs until the end. And then, you know, things, the wheels fell all the way off. And they were just skidding down the street on a muffler and whatnot. So I know. And then she gets fired abruptly, like, boom. It's like, whoa, what happened? I, how she only get one year? And now she's here home in New York where she played, where she was a, you know, star for um, the New York Liberty. And I know she feels sad. I know she's sad, man. I feel bad for her, man, because I know there's a level of embarrassment. There's a level of shame and sadness. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, damn, she got, they told her to kick rocks after one year, man. Um, and, uh, and the sisters is getting this off season is 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 get is bad for the sisters, man. Woo! Sisters getting an issue, man. God, dog. Um, uh, Atlanta Dream fire head coach Tanisha Wright after three seasons. Oh, she got three years. Okay. Um, what's that? Isn't that the place where? <laughs> Uh, Allison Barber said uh, they was hanging over the rafters or something like that. Atlanta would normally have 3,000, 4,000 people. Now they have 17,000 people, and they sold 1,000 standing room only tickets. So when we walked into the arena, people were on that third balcony looking down at the tops of our players' heads to watch. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to take in. Man, Tanisha, man, you was packing out the building, man. Why they fire you, man? You had people hanging off the rafters, man. Mm -mm -mm. Um, let's get into this, man, because they they whacking these sister coaches, man. The League of Diversity and the Black Women League that's built on black women. Um, <laughs> seem to be it's a purge going on of black women coaches, man. Um, Tanisha Wright's time with the Atlanta Dream is over. <laughs> Dream announced Wednesday afternoon it had fired right after three seasons leading the franchise. The announcement came days after the Dream were knocked out of the first round of the playoffs. Um, here's a statement from the Atlanta Dream. The Atlanta Dream have made a difficult decision to part ways with head coach Tanisha Wright. Tanisha was an important contributor in our effort to rebuild the Dream. And we want to thank her for her hard work and dedication to the dream over the last three seasons and wish her the best in the future. At this time, we believe a change is needed to lead our players and organization to the next chapter in our efforts to be a top team in the WNBA. Okay, man. Um, Wright was hired ahead of the 2022 campaign after a short run as an assistant with the Las Vegas Aces. She was hired to replace both Mike Peterson and Darius Taylor, who split the 2021 campaign as the Dream's head coach after the organization parted with Nikki Colin the year before. So they fired, a, it was a brother and a white dude co-coaching the team. How does that work? But they got fired. Uh, the girl before them got fired, Nikki Colin. Wright led the dream to double digit wins in each of her three seasons. <laughs> Yo, eight or 12 teams make the playoffs. Come on, man. Um, which is something the organization hadn't seen since 2018, but she failed to mount a winning record. Dream have had just one season over 500 in the past decade. 
Dream went 15 and 25 this season to reach the playoffs for the second straight season. Okay, so she made the playoffs, I guess. But they were knocked out in the first round by New York Liberty. The Liberty swept their opening round series 2-0. Wright went 48 and 68 in her run as the Dream's head coach. Jeez. 48 and 68. Yikes. The Dream will now start searching for a replacement. They are third team in the league to split with their coach this season. Los Angeles Sparks fired Kurt Miller. The Chicago Sky split with Teresa Webb. So you got a LGBT coach and two sisters getting whacked. This is the first. Kurt Miller was the first LGBT coach um, to uh, in in openly LGBT in in, in professional sports history. He's the first openly one. So he's gone. And two sisters is gone. Um, golly, man. It's a purge, man. But what about the coach who helped mold this potential into performance? Christy Sides, the overlooked architect. Here's where the controversy kicks in. Christy Sides, Indiana Fever's head coach, received just one vote for coach of the year. One. And that despite leading the Fever through a remarkable midseason turnaround. After a rocky 2-8 start, August became the team's breakthrough, where they went 5-1 and posted the highest-rated offense in the league. Side's leadership in August even earned her the prestigious Coach of the Month Award, the first in Fever's franchise history. Sides had a team that was finding its footing, but her adjustments, particularly on defense, helped them climb out of an early-season slump. The Fever started as a team struggling to stay relevant and ended as a team pushing for the playoffs. Yet, when it came time to vote for Coach of the Year, Cheryl Reeve of the Minnesota Lynx dominated the conversation, taking 62 of 67 votes. Reeve's achievements are undeniable. This was her record-breaking fourth Coach of the Year award, but Sides deserved more than just a single vote. So why was Sides left out? Was her early season struggle too much to overcome in voters' minds? Or is there a deeper issue with how mid-season turnarounds are evaluated when award season rolls around? Christy Sides! Oh, my God. Do these people even watch the game? You can tell that, that this woman who made this video doesn't follow the fever. Or whoever made the video, they may be using a um, a different voice. But whoever made that video does not watch the fever. Um, and listen, I'm not here to kick Christy sides and bash her right now. That's not what this video is about. But I just wanted to show you that, like, outside of the – Fever underground. <laughs> People think Christy Sides is a heck of a coach, man. Um, wow. You got all the sisters getting whacked. The LGBT dude getting his a pink slip, no pun intended. And Christy Sides, people whining that she didn't get enough first place votes for coach of the year. <laughs> We in a bizarro world, man, because it's the WNBA, man. Supposed to take care of the sisters, man, and the um and the they them's, man. Well, it is one sister left, man. I, th I I'm proudly from LA, 82nd and Western to be exact. Um, when I say gangster, it's not you know <laughs> a negative thing. It's on my mindset. See, I still got the gangster coach, man, from Seattle, man. Um, she had a good season, man, a decent season. They, you know, they got knocked out in the first round, swept, but still, man, uh, I think they were like the fourth, fourth or fifth seed or something. I mean, I think maybe the fourth seed. So I think, hope she keeps her job, man. Um, come on, WNBA, man. How this going to look, man? If y'all whack all the sister coaches and the LGBT coach, man, that means you're only going to have racist coaches, man. <laughs> all you're going to be left with is racist, um, privileged coaches, man. Can't be a league full of racist, privileged coaches.